Hello, everyone, and welcome to Out FM on WBAI. This is another edition, I guess we could call it, of um, the kitchen table conversations that we started at uh, Zami Nobla. And, I, and I'm Stahamili Mapp, and I have with me today Chedra Pittman, and who is a uh, curator of a film festival that's going to be had over Zami Nobla uh, organization. And, and, and Shade is going to talk to us about that a little bit later. And also, uh, we have with us Kai Thomas, who is a filmmaker and uh, an extraordinary filmmaker, who was brought to my attention by Shadra. Um, Kai's film is going to be shown at that, that, film, at that film festival that Shadra's curating. Um, yeah, so we have, we have Kai with us today. And Kai has brought us an extraordinary film um, called Queenie. And Queenie is uh, an elder black lesbian living in Brooklyn dealing with some housing situations that Kai is interrogating in this, in this documentary film. Um, so let's hear a little bit about Kai and, and we'll hear a little bit about from Shadra who she is a little bit later, but Kai, um, I've got a little biographical information on you and you define yourself as a, a, a Liberty City native whose curiosity was born and natured in the Moonlight neighborhood. So welcome to this conversation, Kai, and tell us a little bit about that statement. What does that mean? Thank you so much for having me, first of all, and that this show even exists and like this platform. Um, yeah, I grew up in Liberty City, which is a specific neighborhood in Miami that now most people know because of the film Moonlight. Um, a lot of my work is grounded in space and location and confined spaces as Queenie is. You're kind of confined to her bedroom and her apartment in that short documentary. Um, I'm really excited to have this film out in the world and to be partnering with Zami Nobla and Beyond Brave and the Black Lesbian Archives and sort of contributing to the representation of like Black lesbians in documentary. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot, a lot in a short statement, Kai. Um, you're a young woman, you're, I mean, you're, you're a young sister, you know, Kai mm -hmm. told me that her, her uh, pronouns are she, her, so I'm using the right pronouns, mine is yeah. she, her also. Um, Young, your young person out here doing this documentary on an elder sister, um, mm -hmm. a black lesbian elder sister. What brought you to this topic? Yeah, so in 2018, uh, someone invited me to a screening of a short film, and that short film was about like young LGBTQ folks. And after I watched that film, I was just like, I haven't seen anything about Black lesbian elders. Like, you know, there's a wide variety of documentaries that I feel are about like the voguing scene or like young trans folks, but nothing really about like elders and like Black lesbian elders specifically. So after that screening, I just started researching. I was like connecting with different organizations that specifically serve like elders of color, um, so like actually Marianne was one of the first folks that I went and met with to be like, hey, like I have this thematic idea of wanting to follow an elder. Um, and then I learned about like the push across the country for LGBT elder affordable housing. Um, and at the time, that's when like the Stonewall, which at that time was being referred to as Ingersoll residences, like the applications were opening. Um, and then I got connected with Grio Circle, which is an organization in Brooklyn that specifically serves um, elders of color. And I asked them, I was like, hey, are any of your participants applying to this housing thing? Um, they connected me with Queenie. Queenie and I had a bunch of phone calls. Um, and then I would come to her home and hang out. Um, and then we started, we started filming um, from essentially like Thanksgiving of last year until Christmas was the bulk of the filming and her waiting to hear back uh, about her application. So let's hear a little bit of- I taste just like a woman and I make love like a woman and I hate just like a woman, I break up like a little girl. 
completely destroyed everything. I put a little sprinkle of onion. I love angels. Angels are all over my apartment because I believe that the angels have a big impact on our lives. That's my baby. <laughs> Home to me has always been peace. Home is where I can shut out the outside world. It doesn't concern me because what concerns me is what's inside my home. So, it's, and, and you know, I just want to say at the outset, and Shadra, I definitely want to hear your comments on this. This is a beautiful film, folks. I uh, say that to you, say this to the audience, a beautiful film is shot. This sh is so, it's, it's shot so lovingly of this elder sister. Uh, it's beautiful, it's intimate, you know. Um, and you know, I've looked at a few of your, of your other shorts, Kai, I mentioned this to you, and I, and I, I immediately felt the warmth in uh, your other series, The Last, is it The Last Call series? Yeah, yeah, um, The Last Call that, series. Yeah, that, that warmth really comes through. Um, Shaja has a lot of thoughts on this. Let me hear what you're thinking about that, Shaja. Shaja, can you hear us? Yes, yes I can hear you. Okay, um, I was just going to say one, you know, thank you, Stahamili, for having us on. Mm -hmm. When, um, you know, Marianne actually uh, introduced me to Kai's film, uh, told me about Kai and told, uh, you know, we're doing this Women's Sweet on Women Film Festival. Um, and there's a committee of us that have, worked, that have been working together on it. And she said, this is brilliant young woman. She has do, she's doing incredible work. She is really accomplished. And so when we connected with Kai and we saw the film, she sent us a link so we could see the film. I was completely blown away. I was blown away, one, because of the intergenerational aspect of the film, the fact that she, as the young woman, um, is doing this work to give visibility to older black lesbians to me was just just the most beautiful thing ever um this notion of reaching back to the elders and telling their story and giving them a platform i just thought was beautiful mm -hmm. and from an anthropological perspective i will say the film felt really ethnographic it was beautifully done like you captured without giving away details of the film, you captured the pieces of Queenie in such a way that I felt like I knew her. Like I felt like I was having a relationship that I was right there in her apartment also. Yeah, that, that, so, apart, that apartment was something else, Queenie's apartment. It, it was like a museum. <laughs> it really was, it really yeah. was. And you really it's, got all those details, Kai, go ahead. It's, it's definitely an archive of her life, I think. She and I, I since finished filming Queenie, have worked on some other projects about elders and to see how people are so lived into their space and the attachment they have to their things and like what you collect over a lifetime. Like in Queenie's house, she has like a picture that she took, the, took of Muhammad Ali, like on 125th Street. Like this bananas are like, you know, all the eight tracks, all the records, um, all the mementos, like, you know, Everything about this film has been really intentional, even down to like the poster, like that poster and key image is, you know, from the first time I filmed with Queenie and that's her pondering when I asked her to explain to me, like, what are the things in this room that are the most important to you? And like, that is where that look and where that image comes from. Um, you know, it definitely wasn't an easy project, right? I was at her house for three weeks straight from nine to five because we're waiting to hear back from NYCHA. Yes. Um, and there probably were only two days that I didn't film. One where it was just like, you know, to be in space with an elder, like you have to hold that space. You have to be attentive. Like I can't just be like, all right, let's turn off the TV and just like mess around. Like that wasn't the deal at all. <laughs> um, you know, we're just like, we had a really sweet time. Like I actually got to watch Moonlight with her and to like talk about it or to like talk about her experience growing up and like who she is in the world and why she does the things that she does. Um, 
I think this is a film about dignity, right? What does it mean to age with dignity? Like I was drawn to this topic because I don't have the closest relationship with my nuclear family. And unfortunately, like LGBT elders, like if you're not partnered or if you don't have a child, aging could be a very isolating experience. And I wanted to show a film uh, that represented that. Um, Queenie has, you know, home aides that are in her home, usually from like eight to six, Monday through Saturday. Um, so like that is kind of her network, but she also has like a network of like black lesbian goddaughters that she's, you know, known through her like activism and organizing work. Um, but I just want to make sure that like folks are not invisible and uh, that there's more intergenerational relationships you know I am 26 years old and Queenie just turned 74 this year and that is someone oh, who yeah, yeah blessings <laughs> yeah. um that I can reach out to with anything you know like she very much believes in like the ancestors and our elders making sure and ordaining our life and like listening to messages and like you know her big thing is like what's for you is for you and that's something that I've really been working on internalizing. It's been such a privilege to hear folks connecting so strongly with the film, because like as a filmmaker, when you're in it, you're thinking of so many things, you know, yeah, yeah. like I can barely see ahead of the day that's in front of me when I'm like shooting. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, filmmakers say there's like the film you have in pre-production in your mind, the film you actually shoot and then like the film you're able to like actually edit and like what is the storyline that an audience is really going to understand and I think I am so like proud and elated of like every stage that this film has taken um, and also I have to make sure to acknowledge like this film couldn't be possible without Sisters in Cinema which is an organization run by Yvonne Welbon which is a black lesbian um, they were the first funders for the project. Mm. Um, in addition to Sisters in Cinema, Next Off, which is an organization that specifically serves nonfiction makers of color, put up money for the project. Um, and then within the last month, we got some finishing funds from If Then, which is an organization that uh, supports regional filmmakers. Um, and they did a round of funding for uh, stories that were based in the Northeast. Um, and I just had a really great team. Cesar Martinez Barbara was the editor of the film. Um, I had a fantastic consulting producer in Jenny Casas, someone I could, you know, show an outline to or be like, hey, like, I don't think XYZ is working. What do you think? Like, you know, the transcripts. Good collaboration, yeah. Very, very, very good collaboration. Um, and people who have known me for a while, like, I think as an artist, it's really important for people um, to know like the vision of the project like right Queenie is what's referred to as like a verite documentary film there aren't any sit down interviews you're observing right. her right. life in real time you're observing this application in real time and seeing the range of emotions that she had in that process wow yeah well thanks for that little bit of education I appreciate I always like hearing <laughs> the terminology on the inside mm -hmm. that yeah and, I, and all of what you just said about all the process I think really comes through in the film. I mean, it's a, it's a tight film. It's, it's, it's beautifully done. It's, it's, it's nothing spared. Uh, there's no extra. It, everything, everything, everything in the film relates to the one to the other, which, and I mean, I even told you that I think I had the feeling having watched that film and, and the other three short documentaries that you've done that I've seen. Um, I really, it, it really put, it gave me the same feeling I had when I have, when I've seen, when I saw Our Daughters of the Dust mm -hmm. and some of, some of um, Yoruba, Yoruba Richard's, uh, Richard's work. Um, mm -hmm. Very t careful attention to the detail of these black women and this black woman. And, and, yeah. you know, I mean, as a, as a elder, uh, black lesbian, I appreciate that attention and, and the beauty of your, of your thinking on that. Yeah, I mean, there's a great lineage of Black women directors. You know, a lot of people feel like there aren't enough of us out here, and that's not the case. A lot of us are making projects in a very self-determined way. Like, Queenie mm -hmm. did not have a huge budget. Like, that was, like, my time that I gave to it, and, like, you know, friends who were able to, you know, edit at, like, below their rate because they really believed in the project. Uh, Yoruba's film, The New Black, is a phenomenal film. Yes. I also think about uh, Tiana McLeod and like her work that she has of documenting black lesbians um, you know I think about Marlon Riggs, Yvonne, Thomas Allen Harris like there are folks in this community who have been doing the work and I hope 
we are able to continue to have the resources to do the work, you know? And the platforms to show it for it yeah. to be viewed. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I almost want to read the, the, the list of, of awards and, and film festivals you've been in. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, one of them for the New York listeners is the Tribeca Film Festival. So you've been, you've had entry uh, there. So well. I, so or, or I actually, relationship with the Tribeca Film Institute, which is actually no longer, unfortunately, because of COVID related shutdowns. But um, I, for a film that I've been working on, it uh, received like a finalist award. So I'm really lucky to have been supported by folks like the Sundance Institute, which I was a Sundance Ignite Fellow, um, Cartempuin Films, I was in their Diverse Voices and Documentary Fellowship Program, and they also put up money for that series, Last Call. Um, yeah, I, I have definitely been fortunate. Any interest in doing longer feature film type of projects, or are you are you are you uh, firmly in the DACA documentary short form? Uh, uh, I have been working on what's supposed to be a feature for the past two years. Uh, when it will come out, when it will be done, I'm not too sure. I'm actually like kind of on a sabbatical break from that project just to be able to think about it differently because that's another real thing. And I've talked to other filmmakers. It's like, you know, I don't know necessarily if I'm a filmmaker who's trying to put out new work every year. Like there is a, a lot of emotional labor as it comes to like, you know, sure. creating relationships with your participants, right? Like, and finishing the film Queenie, this is now an individual that I am in relation to for the duration of our lives. And like, how yeah. do you continue to like add those people mm. to your life in a way that's like sustainable and good and like able to support each other and not just be extractive? Because unfortunately there are filmmakers who are like, okay, you are only in my life for this, you know, period of time of me doing the documentation and that's it. And like, that's not really the way I work. Um, but I would like to do a feature in the future, but I'm not one of those people who's like, you know, I won't consider myself a marquee filmmaker until I've done a feature because that's not the case. Like I now have done like five shorts and like five shorts that I'm really proud of. Um, but I actually think the next thing that I'm considering is I would love to make a narrative short. Like, I think I would love to see a black lesbian love story, um, in some way and like going to try to do some writing and maybe shoot something next summer. So those are kind of the things that I'm working on. I do want to continue to do storytelling about like aging and grief and what that looks like. Um, I had a really interesting conversation with a friend and his mother the other night is like, what is the media that exists to speak to like, you know, the families of like the 200,000 plus folks that have like been lost to COVID? Like, what is the coping and documentation of that? Like, there are children who have lost both of their parents, you know, like what what is the media to console those people and to also affirm them in ways um, that are not fleeting is something that I'm thinking a lot about. Um, so I was just listening to an interview with a, a school teacher who was, who was so concerned about that, you know, and, and talking about how, how, how folks getting ready to be teachers and only concerned about what goes on in your classroom when you have children who have lost both of their parents and, mm -hmm. and you know, the, the, the discussions are really not around all of that. And of course it's, you know, impact on black and, and brown children is so much more, um, you know, devastating because of uh, how we respond to COVID. Um, and you, um, yeah, that, that's, that's really good. I'm, um, you know, so we know you're gonna come out with some great stuff. We're all looking forward to seeing mm -hmm. oh, more of it. You. Um, both you and Shadra have mentioned the person by the name of Mary Ann, who is the executive director and founder of Zami Nobla. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, uh, and Shade is going to do, is, is doing a film festival for them in which your film Kai will be shown. And so Shadra, yeah. So Shadra, talk a little bit about the film festival. First of all, okay. we love the name, girl. That's the name right there, the film <laughs> festival. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, this is, it's, this is a labor of love and it is, you know, so Marianne Adams um, founded, um, Zemi Nobla in 2011. And uh, it's a feminist organization, a social justice organization that centers Black lesbians on aging. And, um, you know, we've come together as a committee. So there's Alicia Swan, there's Elise Emery, 
uh, and Marianne and I have come together to do this film festival. Our first film that we did was, uh, was uh, Ruth Ellis at 100, uh, Living with Pride, that was done by Yvonne Welpon. And so we're excited, beyond excited, to have Kai Thomas um, for this uh, film that's going to be showing October 24th, 8 p.m., on uh, Zoom platform, so we'll send all that information out to everybody. But it's a wonderful partnership and collaborative effort with Sisters in Cinema, Beyond Bold and Brave, um, Black Lesbian Archives, and Zami Nobla. And so we've come together to do this film festival um, because this is about visibility. And you know, it's, it's so just relevant. Kai's film is talking about Black elders, Black elder women, Black elder lesbian women, because that's what Zami Noble is about. It's about centering and giving visibility to our lives and our experiences. So we are beyond excited. We're going to have a talk back with Kai on the 24th. So we're inviting everybody to come, participate, have conversations with her, find out what she's doing next. She's doing amazing work. And I just want to say this, you know, she said that in doing these projects that she doesn't want to just take from the participants. And that just to me speaks to the soul of who Kai is, right? Mm -hmm. She doesn't want to come in and she just doesn't want to take. Mm -hmm. She wants to develop relationships. And I think that's just really a beautiful thing to hear someone say mm -hmm. that they want to develop the relationship with the artist. Um, so I just, I just commend you. And I, when I think of you, Kai, I will say this, that you remind me of what Nina Simone said. Mm -hmm. Nina Simone said, the responsibility of the artist is to reflect the times. And you were doing that by doing this film fest, by doing this film and by showing the life of Queenie. So, uh, we thank you, you know, for the great work that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And I'm so looking forward to partnering with other organizations. If there are folks who are listening into the show or are watching uh, who want to reach out, I'm sure I'm more than happy to include my email address on the written materials. Um, and it wanted to be accessible because, you know, so many folks feel as though like the film industry is something that they can't enter. Um, I'm 26 and I'm able to have like a film that's screaming, screening at Woman on Woman Film Festival. Queenie will also be playing at New Fest and also Milwaukee Film Festival and continue to have a life on the film festival circuit. Um, but the community screenings is so, so important to me, um, which is why within like the first two weeks of this being out in the world, I wanted to prioritize showing it with Zami Nobla. Um, so please so, do not. Any social media um, coordinates you want to give out for so that people can stay up on this? Um, my, if someone just Googles my name, my Twitter and my Instagram should pop up. Just my spelling of my name is C-A-I, Kai, and then last name Thomas, T-H-O-M-A-S. Thank you, Kai. And mm -hmm. uh, Shadra? Yeah, so to Important. give the information, to, yeah, to find out more information about the screening that is going to be on Saturday, October 24th, 8 p.m. on the Zoom platform, you can visit um, Facebook, you can visit Zami Nobla there, or you can visit ZamiNobla.org, and that's Z-A-M-I-N-O-B-L-A.org to find out more information about the screening. The tickets are $5 for Zami Nobla members and $10 for the general public. So we are, as I said, thrilled, thrilled, and beyond thrilled to do this screening uh, with Kai. So we hope everybody comes out and participates and has a, a conversation with her afterwards. Yes, oh, yes, great. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. So thanks to both of you. Uh, we're looking forward to the screening. We're looking forward to more work from you, uh, Kai, and, um, you know, stay in the struggle, sis. It's, it's beautiful work, you know. <laughs> thank you, um, thank you. I really appreciate representing it. Representing us, you know, this is, um, Shadra and I were talking about the that we feel Kujichaga Leah all over this project, you know, self-determination all, <laughs> all over this project, you know, so I appreciate yeah. that. And we'll talk to you again soon. Okay? Thank you. Thank, thank you, Sahamili. Thank you both. You're welcome. Bye-bye.